Having rapidly gotten a modern coastal defence ship built with the Dristigetin, the Swedish Navy sought to iterate on their success with a follow-on class that incorporated some of the additional lessons that were coming out of the rapid pace of naval development at the turn of the 19th to the 20th centuries. This would lead to the design of the much easier to pronounce Aran class, roughly translated glory or honour. The resulting ships bore a strong resemblance to their predecessor, but with a few improvements built in. The main battery was still a pair of 210mm or 8.3 inch guns in single turrets, one fore and one aft, and the secondary battery was likewise still six single 6 inch guns, three per side. But now each of these was mounted in its own turret instead of in casements. The anti torpedo boat battery was once again made up of 10 single 57mm guns, eight on the superstructure, and one each living a happy life atop the main turrets and the armament was rounded out by a pair of submerged torpedo tubes. Armour was significantly improved, with the belt expanded to cover slightly more area, although it was only 7 inches thick as opposed to 8 inches in the previous class, with a 1 inch thick deck, 7.5 inches on the main turret faces, and about 3 inches on the secondary turrets. The reason for the slight thinning down was that this armour was of the brand new Krupp type steel. So, although being slightly physically thinner, and thus lighter weight, it actually offered better protection than the Harvey version on the previous ship. Slightly heavier, at 3,600 tonnes, the power plant was uprated to 6,500 shaft horsepower to propel the ships through the water at around 17 knots, courtesy of a pair of vertical triple expansion engines driving two screws. Some of the ships in the class were a fraction faster, and others just a little slower than this target speed. Four ships would eventually be built, with the first three, Aran, Vasa, and Tapahetan, laid down in 1899. These ships would all be launched in 1901, commissioned in late 1902 and early 1903, but two years later, a fourth, Manleerton, was laid down, launching at the end of 1903 and commissioning a year and two days later at the end of 1904, taking advantage of the delay to build the ship with some fixes already in place for a number of issues that had arisen during the construction of the first three vessels. Shortly after completion, starting in 1906, the ships were taken in hand to have a new tripod mast and rangefinder installed, and the ships would then go on to receive minor periodic updates. But their fates began to diverge quite rapidly. Tapper Hetton start, spent the first six months of 1914 stuck on rocks and needed extensive repairs, and in the early 1930s, Manleerton had some of her boilers converted to run on oil. But also at this time, Vasa was decommissioned and stripped as part of economy measures, and this would be the end of her active career, only being worked on briefly in World War II to serve as a decoy, although it did take an, until 1960 to actually send her to the breakers. With World War II breaking out, the other three ships were earmarked for upgrades. The Aran and Tapaherton had their anti-torpedo boat guns removed and replaced with a mixture of both as 57mm, 40mm and 25mm anti-aircraft guns, along with new fire control equipment. In their guise, they protected Swedish neutrality for the rest of World War II, being decommissioned in 1947 and then sold for scrap. Tapaherton in 1952 and Aran in 1961. Although, by the time the scrappers got around to towing Aran in 1968, she decided to break her tow and go down at sea instead. Manleerton, the most recent and most advanced of the class, was completely reconstructed in 1941, with a new bow and forward superstructure, with newer and higher angled main guns, although of the same calibre. Her boilers were replaced and the anti-aircraft battery upgraded, similar to her sister's. Looking quite different from how she had before, she rejoined the fleet in 1942 and served on the front line until the end of the war, becoming a training ship thereafter before ostensibly being sold for scrap in 1952, but then retained for use as a pontoon or key, a role in which her hull apparently continued until the 2010s, when it is reported that she was finally scrapped. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.